Hi everyone, and welcome to week four of the Linguistics 101 Online. This week we'll be looking at phonology. <clears throat> phonology is dealing with sound, kind of like phonetics, which we looked at last week. <clears throat> the difference here is that phonology is looking at how sounds behave when they are in context. So when we looked at phonetics, we looked at how sounds are formed on their own, how we describe those sounds, but here we'll be looking at how the sounds behave when they're next to each other. There are a few different concepts we'll be looking at. The one I'll be covering in this first little video is called natural classes. Natural classes are put technically groups of sounds that pattern together. What that basically means is groups of sounds that share some kind of property. So for example, the English past tense suffix that we put on the end of verbs, you know, the one we frequently write as ed, um, is actually going to sound different depending on the final segment or the final sound of the root verb. So for example, we can have an alveolar stop as the final sound of the root verb. We can take the verb raid, like if there's a bunch of Vikings who raided a village. Raid, the d, is an alveolar stop. So the past tense ending it will take is a schwa followed by another alveolar stop. So raid becomes raided. If we have voiceless sounds at the end of a verb, then we can have a voiceless alveolar stop as the past tense ending. So if I say, I kicked a ball, the k or the voiceless velar stop at the end of kick uh, gets a t or a voiceless alveolar stop as the past tense ending. So basically we have these different categories, alveolar stops, voiceless sounds, or voiced sounds in general, that get different past tense endings just based on these properties. So the fact that, for example, voiceless sounds behave in a similar manner suggests that they are what's called a natural class. To determine what sounds actually form a natural class, we can look at one, whether the sounds share one or more features. So do they share some kind of property like place of articulation, manner of articulation, being voiced or voiceless? And then two, do these sounds also form a complete set that shares those features in the given data or in the given language that we're looking at? So one example that might be a little easier to follow if you are looking at your IPA charts. So I would go ahead and bring up your IPA chart if you have it. Um, it should be under the course material for last week. Um, so we can look at these sounds, m, n, and ng. So basically these are the natural class of nasal consonants in English. Um, the way we kind of can justify calling them a natural class of nasal consonants in English is that one, all three of them are in the language's inventory. So all three of these are in English. And then two, are there any other nasal consonants in English? If you look at the IPA chart and look at the section for manner of articulation and find nasal as the um, manner of articulation, then you can call, you can see that all of these are the only nasal sounds in English. <clears throat> so um, because these are the only nasal sounds in English, um, they are the natural class of nasal consonants in English. So as a little exercise at the end of this section on natural classes, um, I'd like you to look at these groups of sounds and decide whether they are a natural class in English. So I'll walk you through, I'll walk you through all of these, but if you take a second and try to do it on your own first before I kind of give away the answers, that might be helpful. Um, but here I go talking about uh, group A of those sounds. What we have are p, t, k, and the glottal stop. So you may notice on your IPA chart that these are all in that row describing oral stops. So they are oral stops, but 
you can also see that there are other oral stops in English. Um, however, that doesn't mean these can't be a natural class yet. Um, there is another thing we can kind of put in there to consider these natural class. If you look at um, the stops here that occur in pairs, so p has a pair b, t has d, and k has g, they all have a pair um, those three. In, and in all three of those cases, the um, sound that we're looking at is actually on the left of the pair, which means that it is a voiceless stop. And then the glottal stop is also voiceless. Um, it doesn't have a pair, but the glottal stop is voiceless. So we can actually call these the voiceless oral stops in English, and that is a natural class. Uh, the group B um, we already looked at in the previous slide. Group C, we have R, L, W, and Y. If you look at where they are on the IPA chart, their um, places of articulation are all over the place, but the manner of articulation for all four of these is actually some kind of approximant. So there's central approximant, there's lateral approximant. Um, you may have heard me call these sounds glides before. But basically, these four sounds are all of the approximants in English, so we could actually call them a natural class of approximants or a natural class of glides. Um, group D here is quite a few sounds, uh, so if you went ahead and tried to describe all these groups as some natural class or another, you may have had trouble with this one because this is not a natural class in English. Um, these sounds are all over the place in terms of place of articulation, manner of articulation. There's not really a way that I can see that we would somehow describe these sounds and not include other sounds as well. So these sounds are not something that we would call a natural class. If we look at group E, we have p, b, t, and k. So um, again, you may have had trouble describing this as a natural class in English because it's hard to somehow come up with the terms to describe these but to not include the other oral stops in English. Um, we can't use place of articulation because um, bilabials, p and b, but then we have alveolar t and velar k. So place of articulation doesn't work. Voice versus voiceless doesn't work because we have both a voiced bilabial stop and a voiceless bilabial stop. So in English, these are not a natural class. However, just for informational purposes, it can be a natural class in another language. So Chickasaw actually has this as a natural class because they don't have some of the oral stops that English does. So just because um, a group of sounds might be a natural class in English doesn't mean that they will be in another language. And just because they aren't a natural class in English doesn't mean that they can't be in another language. So um, hopefully you're getting a little comfortable with what a natural class is, basically a group of sounds that shares one or more properties. Uh, because we will be using this in the next lecture, which is going to be on phonemic analysis. So um, if you need to review this, go ahead. If you have questions, go ahead and send them to me, and I will try to help out.